Hello guys, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Aldani and the topic which I am going to discuss today is the basics of biomechanics. This is one of the topic in which I feel that undergraduate students and sometimes postgraduate students and even dental practitioners, they cannot understand it properly and when they are applying force on a tooth to achieve particular kind of movement, they cannot predict that in which direction tooth is going to move. So after this lecture, I feel that they will get some understanding of the topic and in my upcoming lectures, I will go into further details. But for that, you will have to suggest me also in the comment section that what topic do you want me to cover in my upcoming lectures. Let's start this topic with the definition of center of mass and center of resistance. Center of mass is defined as the balance point of any object where all the mass, all the weight of that object is concentrated. Like this triangular shape structure, the center of mass is somewhere here in the center. Okay, uh, now what is the importance of this point? The importance is that if you want to lift this triangular structure without losing any balance, then you have to lift this from center of mass from this single point like this ball the center of mass is somewhere here in the center if you want to lift this ball linearly or you want to spin this ball on single finger then you have to lift this ball from center of mass if you try to lift this ball from side from the sides you will not be able to spin or even lift this ball it will fall down same is with the baseball bat if you want to lift it without losing any balance then you have to lift it from the center of mass now the center of mass of a human body is around the umbilical area around the navel and if you want to lift any anyone without losing any balance like this then you have to apply force from the center now let me give uh, example of this wooden plank before jumping in into the definition of center of resistance. If you want to calculate the center of mass of this wooden plank, it is somewhere here in the center. And this is the point from where you can uh, spin this wooden plank on a single finger. But now what is center of resistance? If this wooden plank is a free body, then we call it center of mass right this point but if you embed this wooden plank into the ground now this is not a free body it is confined it is a constrained body constrained by the ground this point will shift a bit downward right and we call it center of resistance so this is the basic difference between center of mass and center of resistance when we talk about center of mass we are talking about a free wall free object free body and we are when we are talking about center of resistance we are talking about uh, uh, the same object it is confined by any structure like a tooth when the tooth is out of the bone when you have extracted this tooth we call it center of mass right and it is somewhere here but if this tooth is present within the bone, it is surrounded by periodontal ligament and alveolar bone. We call it center of resistance. So this is the basic difference. Now let me try to clear this concept more with the example of this man who is standing with the roller skates in his legs. If you want to move this man bodily without any tilt, you have to apply force at the center of mass which is exactly at the level of umbilicus and this is a free man therefore the center of uh, mass is at the center of his body so if you start applying force to pull him back the man will move back without any tilt but if you have placed a box to stop him now the man is no more a free body and his center of mass has been shifted a bit downwards in the area which has been confined with the box 
and we call it center of resistance now if you keep on applying force at the same level there will be a tilt right so if you want to move this man bodily now you have to apply force at the level of center of resistance then there will be no tilt okay this gives you one more concept that if you want to move bodily then you have to apply force at the level of center of resistance if you apply force away from the center of resistance there will be a tilt or rotational tendency we will discuss this uh, concept more later on in the upcoming lectures also now the question is that where does the center of resistance lie exactly it is said that center of resistance is at the center of mass of the confined area in this case of wooden plank this whole portion is confined so the center of resistance will be in the center in the example of this man this area of the leg is being confined or constrained so the center of this portion there will be center of resistance but here you can see in the case of a tooth uh, in single rotated tooth it is said that uh, if you move apically the center of resistance is approximately at the one third distance from the alveolar crest towards the apex not half of the distance why because the root converges the mass reduce in this area therefore this whole portion which, which is embedded in the bone this part is exactly at the center center of resistance of a single rooted tooth is approximately one third distance from the alveolar crest towards the apex while in multi rooted tooth it is approximately 2 mm apical to the furcation area now on what factors does this center of resistance depend it depends on two factors alveolar bone height and the root mass now i would like to emphasize over here that we are talking about the root mass not only the length root mass means length of the root as well as buccolingual and mesodistal width of the root because according to the definition of center of resistance it is center of mass of the constrained portion like the root is embedded into the bone and we are taking the center of mass of that area so this also clears one more thing that whenever there is alveolar bone resorption the center of resistance will move apically because the confined area is reduced now this can also be seen in many patients like this patient came to me with the uh, complaints of proclination of incisors generalized spacing and some open bite tendencies and when I examined this patient clinically and radiographically I came to a conclusion that she had some kind of periodontitis and alveolar bone loss and this led to all these symptoms now the question is that why does this happen whenever there is periodontal breakdown it causes generalized spacing what is the reason now the reasons are twofold one is biological aspect and other is biomechanical aspect when we talk about biological aspect we have to understand that teeth are not in neutral zone we used to think that teeth are surrounded by uh, lip and buccal musculature from outside and tongue force from inside and both the forces are same and they cancel out each other and teeth do not move however this is not right teeth are not in neutral zone you can see in this picture this picture is from William Prophet's book and you can appreciate that tongue force is more than other outside forces and there is a very important role of periodontal ligament to neutralize these unbalanced forces we call it active stabilization there is continuous metabolic activity in the PDL and because of that it produces some energy and that energy is 
used to balance out the unbalanced forces and because of that teeth never move when periodontal ligament is healthy but whenever there is destruction in the periodontal ligament itself tongue force does dominate and because of the tongue force there is labial movement of the incisors the other is biomechanical and you can easily understand from this picture that in uh, this picture first one you can see that there is enough alveolar bone to support this tooth and you can calculate as well as you can see it logically that if you apply some force over here on this tooth the tooth will not move very easily because it is supported by the alveolar bone however there is reduction of alveolar bone and alveolar bone support is reduced for this tooth if you apply force here it will move very easily because the center of resistance has moved apically and there is no enough support uh, of, uh, of the bone to this tooth so the treatment is that first control the disease and give braces and with very light force you can close the spaces like this and achieve a good result same in this case this patient came uh, to me with the same complaints and he also complained about the missing tooth although if you see um, intraoral picture there is none of the tooth is missing it's just flaring of the teeth because of that because of the tongue force there is uh, there were spaces and the uh, treatment was same first control over the disease and then give braces and close the spaces and give fixed retainers afterwards i hope i have cleared many uh, questions regarding the biomechanics thank you very much